Definitely so glad to be here and honored that you would have me sit here and talk about what it is that I do. And what I really do care about, honestly, is making an impact in this world. If I'm going to be living and breathing, as long as I have breath in my body, I'm going to make sure that I can impact and change lives, souls, and do what I've been called to do. Respect, respect, <laughs> respect, respect. I like that. Yeah. So, okay. There's a plethora of things that she has already let you know that she's um, been led to do. And um, let them know where you're from and how this, you know, there was a young lady before it became this queen that knows all of what she wants to do and have the visions going. So let us know where you're from and, and how you got to this point, you know, in your own way. Um, well, I'm here. I'm from here, Washington, D.C. Um, D.C. Raised up until about five, and then my parents moved into the um, Merlin area, so I kind of been there, um, graduated from there. Um, how do I get this to this point? Well, before this point, um, I was just a young girl who thought she just wanted to be in the arts. Okay. Just that's it. That's always been a passion of mine. Um, I really didn't care how it got done at that time. I, my mom used to be um, my manager. I would be in dance groups, I would be writing music starting at like 15, 16 years old. And um, I think at that moment it was just about being famous until uh -huh. God kind of like woke me up and was like, oh ma'am, I want you to do something else. And this is like real story. So if we fast forward, you know, I got married, I started having um, my children and my husband is in the arts too, surprisingly. Like he raps, he, you know, he's a lyricist. Like, and we both kind of came together and we both had that kind of love and passion for music. Then life happened. Okay. 2023, I mean, 2013 hit and we lost everything. Like, oh. wait, not even before that. It literally was a, um, I was robbed at gunpoint in my house, broad daylight, me and my husband, my husband actually walked in on the robbery and they had us at gunpoint. So we didn't know who was going to get out alive, really, to be honest. And that that's when my life kind of took a turn. Um, I saw my life flash before my eyes and I was like, Lord, if you get me out of here, I'll run for you. It ain't nothing else you can tell me. I'm not going to be going around in circles doing what I want to do. Like, it's like at that point, I realized like I could have been dead and I would have been on the news and my parents would have been talking about me or my husband or the kids or all of us. So we fast forward right after that. We were wrongfully evicted after being there for seven years. And that's when I really knew, like, okay, God, what are you up to? Some people be like, okay, oh, my God, this is happening. But I knew something was going on. At that moment, that's when we had to go keep staying with family members. And I noticed that that was going to run out. You know, that was going to run out. And we made a decision to go into the shelter. Um, Virginia Williams is actually a program here in Washington, D.C. I'm sure everybody knows about that, but we went there and our lives changed severely. I call it wilderness. And why am I saying wilderness is because that's a season where you're separated from everything you know, everything you think you know, all of that went away. No family, no friends. It was just us and God and that's it. That's when I learned that ministry was on my life. Funny story is I went back to the place where me and my husband was born, and that's D.C. General Hospital. When I tell people that... I'm also D.C. General Hospital. See? <laughs> when I tell people that, they be looking like, what? Like, God took you back to your place of birth. Mm, mm, I mm. was there you for saw, two years. You, at, the, at the home show, sir? Yes. D.C. General Hospital, same place I was born. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Absolutely. So he took us back to the place of birth. So I found that very interesting. I found that very God-like. Why would you take me back to my place of birth? That's where I learned I had ministry on my life. Y'all, I was in a room 
four carts and one bathroom. And I said, this is what you want me to do? I heard God speak to me and say, start a women's ministry. And from that day forth, I've been running ever since. I will have all kinds of encounters you wouldn't believe in that place. They were all supernatural encounters mm -hmm. where God would thrust me into my ministry. I would know things that I wasn't supposed to know. I would just know. You know, I learned many things that I was an intercessor, somebody who intercedes for people. I learned that I just had many gifts in God. But if I had not got held up in a robbery, if I didn't get set out of my house for seven years, I wouldn't have never launched into ministry. And that's really just what it is. Like... People will be like, what do you mean? Like, I'm telling you, I wouldn't have been doing it. I would have been still doing my own thing. So something had to happen, you know? It is uh, amazing how something like that is a catalyst and how a um, valley moment leads to a mountaintop. Mm -hmm. um, Y'all stay tuned. We'll be back with a little bit more. Y'all stay tuned. Elder in the building. You ready to fight for the cure? Welcome to Win Network, where we are looking to create the win-win in business. Have you ever had the problem, once you've shot some great photos or great footage, that you needed someone to edit it? Look no further, we got your solution. Editors are us. Leave it to the experts for all your post-production needs. We are here for you, 24-7. Post-production is our specialty, but we shoot, produce, direct, consult, and train anyone interested in digital storytelling and any form of video production. Music videos, documentaries, live streaming, promotional videos, corporate events, weddings, you name it. We can bring you broadcast quality production at a very affordable price. Come check out Editors R Us. Like we never left. Um, it's uh, it was a little small poem. I start sometimes when I, I get ready to do my sets, and it says, "I walked a mile with pleasure." She chatted all along the way, but I learned nothing that day. But oh, how I learned when misery walked with me. <laughs> we about to get back to this testimony, y'all. She has um, returned back to DC General in the most ironic way. How the Creator uses uh, ministry, and um, to be back at your birthplace—that's a homeless shelter. Uh, Jesus was, they say, born in a manger. Mm -hmm. So humble beginnings. A lot of us are relate to people who have come from humble beginnings. So please, Queen, continue on with that story. You were—they uh, were trying to get the baby aborted, like they was trying to get rid of Moses. Yeah. So <laughs> just to fast forward a little bit before we landed in DC General. I had found out I was pregnant um, with my daughter. And y'all, she's literally an answer prayer. Some people, you know, I believe that power is in the tongue. Yeah. What you say, you will see if it's bad or good. And this is why I say all the time, be careful with your words. For me, I use my words um, to declare and decree what I wanted to see happen. So years prior, I spoke that I wanted a daughter. I was going to have a daughter. I told, went around telling everybody that. And everybody tried to say, oh, no, you're going to have boys. And this is why you got to be careful with people speaking over your life or speaking to you or speaking negative words because those things, they bear fruit. Mm. And for me, I was just like, no, nope, I'm not accepting it. I rejected it. So she became, um, in real, real time form, um, I remember when God gave me two dreams alerting me that I was pregnant. And the very moment I found out I was pregnant, that's the very mo moment where Satan began to start sending people to say, go abort her, go kill her. Mm -hmm. This is before I even knew she was a girl, but my husband knew from jump that she was a girl. And I was just like, why is everybody trying to kill this baby? He said, because she's a girl. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's destiny. And um, 
me and him said, oh no, that's it. We're not, we're not killing nothing. I didn't kill my other two and I'm not going to kill, you know, this Respect. one. Respect. And, and, and that's what it was. And she's here today. She's really an answered prayer from my prayers and my son, my oldest son used to pray for his sister all the time and to see God honor him at a young age was something, um, magnificent. So with that being said, you know, um, even going through the shelter, I had many opportunities come to me in my wilderness season. I had more interviews. I had pe I was in the informer. I was um I the one of the ladies who had a program. I will never forget her. Shout out to Jamila Larson. <laughs> she runs I think um Project Playtime in Washington D.C. She gave me my first stack of business cards and said, "You need to be speaking. You need to be opening your mouth. You need to become an author." And next, it went to somebody giving me my first laptop. And then the next thing, it just kept going on and on and on. I'm like, God, how was you doing this in a shelter? And what I need you guys to understand is that he will use those things to catapult you into your destiny. What we think is so bad is really just wilderness. It's, it's really just I'm training you for your next level. It's really... I'm pushing out of you what you wasn't going to do. If I, if you would have continued doing what you was doing, you would have never found me. You would have never, Great. you know. So for me, it was about the relationship. I always knew God my whole life. But if you have no relationship with him, now that's where the problem comes in at. You know what I'm saying? Anybody can scream God everywhere. But your relationship is key. And that's where I found out that God is God. He has control over my life. He has control of the, everything, everything that I do. So my love for God really grew tremendously even being in that situation. And I found out a lot about what God can do and how big he really is, you know, even in a situation like big that. Big pressure. Yeah. Big pressure. <laughs> Listen, I love this because um, working in the U.S. sex line for 25 years, you hear and meet so many different individuals. And a lot of tragedy can turn into triumph. Um, once you get out the way and understand you're a vessel um, and the GPS God protected services has gotten you to a lot of interesting places one being Anacostia Art Center here um, how did you get here I want to know about that I want to know about that we're so gonna go back funny. to this uh, testimony but I just want to know a quick shout out to let them know how we even cross paths yeah so I actually um, met um, shout out to Miss Jackie I was actually calling her one day to partner i was looking for partnerships in washington dc concerning my ministry and i ran across it and we got into conversation you said you dialed it i dialed her number okay um with a number i just ran across their company just out of nowhere never knew anything about them just like okay let me see what i can do but i i saw that it was a theater in the arts and one thing i love children i don't care how many adults i work with my heart and my passion has always been with the youth and um Ironically, she we had a conversation and she asked me, she was like, would you like to be a choreographer? Now, everybody knows that knows me. They know I love to dance. That is one of my things I can do in my oh, sleep. Oh, you, you, you can dance. <laughs> I can do it in my sleep. Can mommy dance? Can mommy dance? Okay. <laughs> well, she got a co -sign. So <laughs> it was really good. So long story short, she pulled me on um, to come in um, to be a part of, you know, her vision. And when we got here working on the project at the Art Center, it's funny because, I, again, I've been in D.C. so long, but I never knew that the Art Center was tied to all this stuff. And I'm like, where have you been, Lakia? You know, and I was just like, whatever. So um, then um, I was introduced. Um, I was introduced in a hallway. I remember coming past and we just got to talking. And I didn't know he did podcasts or anything like that. And I was like, well, I'm in radio and TV too. And I was just like, that's like super dope. So we exchanged information and literally that's how we got to this point, which I'm so glad because I always, you know, ask God to put me where I need to be in rooms that I need to be in around people I need to be around. And so it sounds and looks like he's doing that. So really excited about that. Don't judge a book by the cover. Cause you never know what someone's going through in their life um so this this story of the highs and lows the valley moments the mountaintop moments um you you have a beautiful daughter here tonight with us on the set um it was a lot of a lot of adversity with 
your wilderness moment, but you 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 you, you powered through it. You mm -hmm. gave a damn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you basically, uh, uh, what was that shining, uh, you know, moment? Did the, did the same haters still have things to say once you, you moved on and still have the beautiful daughter you have? Of course. You're supposed to have those. I feel like if you don't have them, you ain't doing your job. You ain't got no uh, haters. You ain't <laughs> if you don't have them, you're not doing your job. So, of course, everybody talks because, you know, they always assume what they want to assume for your life. But you have to understand, yes, it may have looked like a whole bunch of chaos to everybody else looking in from the outside, but God knows exactly what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And my destiny and my mandate was wrapped up in all that. The laws, the the, the naysayers, um, people closing doors, opening doors, me landing in the shelter, whatever, all of it is connected um, in the way that it was supposed to happen. So... Most people ask me, hey, Lakia, would you um, go back and change something? Absolutely not, because that's what made me. And if I hadn't went through this, I would not be who God has called me to be today. So, nope, I wouldn't change nothing. Respect, respect. Now, that you have uh, gotten where you are, the ministry, let's talk talk about the tears. Yeah. Talk to me about the, uh, the, the correct name uh, that, that grabbed me <laughs> the <laughs> name is tears to purpose and yes. god gave me that in my wilderness season because it was my tears first before i can go pull somebody else out i had to endure first um i always say i'm the first partaker of anything before it gets to the people that i'm called to be over and so i had to go through the tears and then god started connecting me to the people that i was supposed to steward over and a lot of people think, oh, you're supposed to be in the pulpit. Well, my stage is my pulpit. That's mm -hmm. what I call it. Y'all mm -hmm. remember that, right? Okay. My stage is my pulpit because that's where I pour out the heart of God at. And that is where God uses me the most. So that's what that ministry is about. Um, it started with me just finding women. God wanted me to find women to tell their stories, but not do the, like the born thing and, oh, my, hi, my name is such and such. No, it's reenacting the story. Um, I dealt with a lot of women who knew how to do poetry, who sang, who danced, who, um, who did many things. And I just took those components and made them into monologues. Um, and I launched it um, back in 2019, straight out of the shelter, or literally a year later, because I General. made a, out of it. As soon as I came out, yeah. I hit the ground running out of there because I promised God. I made a vow that you saved my life. Um, you got me and my family through this, so what can I do? I'm not going to tell God, no, no, I'm going to do it because, first of all, I'm afraid that if I don't do it, I don't know what where I'm going to be at. You know what I'm saying? So I don't play with God like that. So I launched it. I, we started getting year after year. It will be testimonies. Then God said, no, I want you to start writing plays. And I'm like, God, come on now. Now, I done did what you told me to do about these monologues. Now you want me to shift over. And I literally wrote one of my first plays, and it was called... Um, at the time left behind. Um, and I realized that was an end time play um, because I realized I was an end time voice. Mm -hmm. So when I come forth, I'm usually speaking or foretelling what is to come. And in that play, it was basically about the rapture mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. And I said, well, God, these people ain't gonna come cause this is too much for them. And he said, don't worry about that. I need you to write it. So seven days I wrote it seven days of fasting seven days of just pure consecration and letting god use me in that way the play came out well you know and we launched it we did it twice then pandemic hit mm. 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 and then in the pandemic he had me right again okay. and this time it was another play which turned which turned into a short film called why didn't i listen this was more so it was a heavier um, it was more about witchcraft in the church, manipulation, just witchcraft being exposed. A lot of people don't know they're under witchcraft. A lot of people don't know they're operating in witchcraft. Well, I'm that one that's going to go there because God already charged me to do it. So I did it through um, short film. Where did you have uh, your... Uh your, your, some of your events. So we did different events. We did different church. We used different churches and things like that um, to do it. My thing was just to start. Um, it wasn't about having a stage format. I just wanted to do what God called me to do. And I figured in my that. mind, 
he'll open up the doors yeah. later. It's yeah. just about starting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I always believe that obedience is better than sacrifice. You so I don't care if I had to do it on the street corner, I was gonna mm -hmm. do it because I didn't want to answer to God. So and that's yeah. motivation. That's motivation. Yeah. Uh, obedience is that, that key to the circumstances of unlocking the next level of circumstances. Um, you're here with this project, and what hand are you, you know, being used in this situation? I see that you are obedient to the spirit, but creatively, I know you have your own platforms, mm -hmm. but what makes this a, a bridge that you, you have with um, the Queen of Stairs? Doing? So for me, I definitely feel like this is not just a job. Um, mind you, I worked for myself five years prior. I didn't work for nobody for five years. Gotcha. I literally, God is my source. That's it. He will give me things. He will send people my way. So it, it didn't matter. <laughs> it didn't matter. So I didn't obey God once again. But with this, my hand is more of an assignment. Okay. And I think that people need to know sometimes a job is a job. Sometimes an assignment is an assignment. You're yeah. only there for a certain amount of time. And then once you've done what you got to do, you're gone. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So for me, my assignment is to the children. Oh, that's right. Well, we're looking forward to that. Down. This pops off tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. Um, they are doing um, the young playwrights. So these are some of the children getting a chance to step forward and, you know, write whatever's on their hearts to go forth with. It's going so. down upstairs. Yes. Black In box. The black box. Mm -hmm. Where could they find the tickets and how could they get Um, You need to go online to Children's Legacy um, Center Theater and you will um, see the tickets. You'll see all the information about the upcoming plays that will air tomorrow and Saturday. So it's two shows. Shows. Yes, so you can go on there, find out about their upcoming events, and, and anything else they have in the future. Yep, everything will be on the website. Well, that's dope. Now, the thing is, it's a lot more. I'm sure that you have to to offer folks that they could read or check up on you or mm -hmm. whatever they have. Where uh, this part of the show is is where you have the unshameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> Let them know where they can find or if they want to build with you on the, the ministries and the things that you're doing. Yeah, so um, if you want to check me out, I am a content creator, so you'll see a lot about me speaking a lot. All right. Um, I post a lot of that on my page, so you can go to Facebook at Lakia Barnett. Spell that for me. Um, L-A-K-I-A. Um, last name is Barnett, B-A-R-N-E-T-T. -T, mm -hmm. And you will see a lot of my content there. You'll see a lot of what I'm getting ready to do. Like I'm getting ready to do a monologue in PA, Harrisburg, PA, June 24th. Okay. And it's going down. It's called the Delivery Room. The Delivery Room. That's dope. Okay. I, it's not I, your ordinary I, delivery room. What will, what will be birthed there? <laughs> Lots. <laughs> We did it back in North Carolina in March. Um, shout out to my pastors um, for allowing us to come down and tell North Carolina. They probably don't want us back. Y'all don't tell nobody. Okay. But, no, it's a good thing. <laughs> no, I mean, no, no, some I'm people just saying. don't like truth and they don't like to be delivered. So, you know what I'm saying. You know. But, yeah, and we're going to be hitting um, uh, Newport News, Virginia in August. And we'll close out a monologue up here in D.C. So, once so you're we doing this on the, you're going on the Oh, road. yeah, I go through. I go through. Every year, we try to hit different places with these monologues. Okay. And this yeah. one is called what monologue? The Delivery Room. That's the, the Delivery that's Room. That's the thing. For this Keep year. it pushing. In yeah. The delivery room. You got to push Destiny. Some people need deliver rent. So, uh, okay. They need it. So, okay. how to do that? You got to expose it. Okay, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> doctor. Listen, on the I Give a Damn Jam, we have a plethora of interesting. Uh, spirits that are having human experiences that wind up being on this show. I'm thankful to the creator how it happens. Um, we will be able to tune into your show. Uh, is this going to be online? Um, the thing that's happening upstairs? Will be yes, online. I do believe they're going to be streaming it, so you will have to go to the website to get all of that information. Let them know what that website is again. Um, you can just type in Children's Legacy Center. Children's Legacy Center. I'm sorry, Children's Legacy Theater. Children's Legacy Theater. Yes. It's all right. We can get it right. Children. We can give a damn jam. What you talking about? It's built off bars. Okay. Yeah. Give them some. All right. So, I ain't did this in a while, but I'm going to try, okay? Yes. All right. Oh, yeah. So it goes. 
No love, no shoes fitting. Playing minds and no one's winning. Catching feelings, I ain't dealing. Soul tied, no commitment. Hey. Laugh hard, I play hard. Just to laugh it off with no regard. Mm. Spaces need feelings in my heart. What? Yep, no escape, I can't erase. I meditate on life itself. No place to live, just fears. Just one time, I'ma keep it real. Yeah. One time, I make it crystal clear. Time is passing. At the end of the day, I ain't scared. I ain't laughing. Ooh, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but. I give up. Damn, Jane. <laughs> Chopping it up with the elder <laughs> kid. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know what I mean? I love it because, one, I did not know this individual had all this going on. I just happened to be walking through Anacostia Art Center, and like anytime my spirit just, you know, uh, uh, sees something that is really dope, and I saw a lot of kids in there getting busy doing their thing, being constructive, dance and stuff. I was like, what's going on with this? And so getting to know uh, the gentleman, who was the young man that was down here earlier? That's DJ. He's one of the stage managers. Okay, so the stage manager said, I know somebody you might need to talk to. He pointed you out. You're the first person you pointed out. And so, but that's destiny. That's the serendipity of things. You said it. You attract what you, you know, you're putting out there in the universe. Mm -hmm. And we are the same one that appreciate how the creator brings us together. So, shout out to your ministry because it sounds like it's very effective. There's a lot of women that could really benefit from that. So, you ladies and fellas, check her out and check out what's going on. Uh, we thank you for coming to the I Give a Damn Jam. We want you to have a blessed day, blessed week, blessed life on purpose. Yeah, stay tuned. Stay tuned into it. We're going to put all your website information up. Are you also on Instagram or TikTok? I feel three. Um, look, uh, TikTok is just my name, Lakia Barnett. Um, what else? You said That's Instagram? It. Yeah, Instagram is fulfilled three. Fulfilled three. The number three? Mm -hmm. All right, so fulfilled three, and Instagram. Tick Yep, and TikTok is just my name, Lakia Barnett. At Lakia Barnett. At Lakia Barnett. How you spell Barnett? B A R N E T T. Yes, it's gonna be on the screen. So you stay tuned. You stay inspired. Love yourself. Go all out. I give a damn jam. Tune in next week. We got a great saxophone player, also a teacher at Anacostia, Anacostia High School, as well as the the sister from a different Mister, Melissa V. Neil Witsy. Stay tuned. I give a damn jam. Obama, Jackson, Jefferson, and uh, and, uh see me in DC. I'm from the nation's capital where we print the capital and uh, two oh two. See me in DC. Yeah. I'll be around from Shrimp Boat to Georgetown and uh, see me in DC. It's not a gust of wind, it's dirty wings, my friend. Feel the breeze through trees whenever I clutch these pens. They hear the strikes, hear the stars, hear the show to YG. The original article, real Dookie VC. Since it got me cocky, man I've been rocking things as happy as young as what's potty train perfected Where the world's directed right here The nation's capital I'm hot as an electric chair Survivor of the Reagan Now it's cracked bliss Fulfilling prophecy I'm the spirit of Washington Smooth as the Odyssey Sailing down Potomac like I own a chocolate city Speedboat Creating streams of currency Recession gets the scene up Round the clock, block the block Cook it, wanna get straight, y'all Giving me hip-hop Was like an eight ball To Ray Fall Evans, he's the legends Wayne Perry to Marin Berry Metro bust the ground bit. Here they go, go pump the slick. Be careful who you with, might be an out of town bit. Hey, check my DC swag. Home with the wizards, the Nat skins, and the caps. President made it back, took our riches, gave us racks. In the hood, it's up for grass, in the barrel full of crabs. Uh, uh. Hey, check my 
my DC shit. Monument Capitol, White House, take a flick. Looking for that grizzle like a kid that ass lit. Then they wrote the Georgia Ave, you might find me on the strip. Uh, and off the strip, you might find me. Hustling, grinding, networking right beside me. Uh, uh, off the strip, you might find me. 202 and DMV is right beside me. Obama, Jackson, Jefferson's and uh see me in DC. Out to I'm from the nation's capital where we rent with the capital and uh see me in DC. I'll be around from Trump home to Georgetown and uh see me in DC. I'm from the nation's capital where we rent with the capital and uh see me in DC. Hey yo, dirty wings up flow, free beats and getting money, hood love me, Playboy bunny, far from a dummy. Politicians promise a lot, but give Nathan lies and fake it. Gentrification smells like sanitation. Garbage raising taxes and job robbing black people. Clever, shoot black males whenever. However, I stay with a positive plot. Went from cutting crack rock to cutting hit and barbershops. Traded up my tools for the raw power move. On the road to riches, dead presidents pursued. And really, though, it be years before you hear me, though. Prison up a Washington, spent hot as been chili, yo. Hit me, though, for Reaganomics. I'm not asking your design for my city like a punk. Benjamin Panic to end up. My DC swag, home of the whips, the nat skins, and the cats. Uh, DC shit. Uh, this is my DC shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my year, say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my year, say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my year. This is my year. This is my year. Let's go. I do that old school dance for Chuck yeah. and Benny. Uh, I do my school dance, yeah. Fat Roddy. Uh, I do my old school dance, Man, Chuck and Benny. Uh, 202, all the soldiers and early soul jets, queens and kings that made DC what it is. Beautiful, beautiful struggle that's been here in DC. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah. This is my year and say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my year and say it. To all the young bucks, to the veterans, stay on one page.